Alright, welcome back to Pay-Per-View um, YouTube channel. Um, I thought I'd introduce you to a little model I invented a little while back, um, which is a little snail. Uh, it's a single sheet snail that takes advantage of bicolour paper. So I've got a nice piece of Tuttle Indigo uh, duo paper here. Um, I want to show you some variations on it because it dis it, the decisions that you make at the beginning sort of determine how the model ends up at the, at, the, at the end point. This is what I call a four pleat snail. You notice the head here is a bit thick. The next one is a six pleat. And again, that little pleat there is a little bit narrower and we're starting to get a couple more creases on the body of the snail. And the model that I originally designed, which was the eight pleat, and you'll notice that we've got some lovely um, body crinkles here, so it sort of makes it look like he's a little bit old and looking up, so that his neck has got a little bit of crunkle in it. Also got nice thin feelers with an eight. The smaller number of pleats you go here, the thicker the feelers are until you reduce them. So I'm going to go with an eight pleat, but the, pro the process for either, uh, any, either of these, you'll see the junction point where you make a decision as to how many pleats you want to do. What you need is a half, a square, a two by one rectangle. Um, purists will probably bristle at that, and purists can bristle if they like. I like an enveloper because it makes a fairly nice crease, although that's not as accurate as it could have been. Never mind, we won't be able to see that in the finished model. So, um, you'll notice that careful planning means that the body of the snail is one colour, the shell is the other colour. You'll also notice the body of the snail is quite folded, whereas the, the shell itself has very few folds in it. So that takes a bit of planning and just a little bit of organisation. And I'll take you through it, because you should see it's pretty straightforward. So, you've got to decide on the body colour, um, which to me is pretty obvious. I think it's going to be that colour. So first things first, take the sheet, fold it lengthways in half, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a water bomb base at one end. So let's fold it in half. Next we're going to make a water bomb here. So with the top layer only, bring the corner down and you should be able to get a nice um, even half square there. Open it back up, just working with the top layer. Remember this is going to be the layer that will be the shell eventually, so I want to scar it. Um, very little, so I don't want to fold it at all. So we're just working with the top layer. Second diagonal of the top square from corner to corner. Now if you've not folded a water bomb base before, then I'm, where have you been hiding? So we've got two mountain folds here from the two diagonals. The only thing missing is a valley fold through the half of the square. Again, folding to that fold line as a guide. Now we should be able to pop a water bomb and it should collapse rather nicely. So this is going to be the head part of the snail and it's going to actually be sitting like that eventually when we're done. Right, so it's going to fold back on itself so that um, all of the blue stuff is at the front. Right, so you can sort of see where we're going with that I'm hoping. Now I like to take one of the flaps at the top and just fold it across so we have a good centre guideline here because we're going to do pre-creasing here. Understand the water bomb base is going to go away and it's going to be replaced by an accordion pleat. This whole point is going to be in outfolded all the way down to this base edge just to make all of this paper go away. This is where we make our decision as to how many pleats we want to do. So you have to decide whether you want to do four or six or eight. So if you do six, then it's a relatively simple matter of guessing a third, taking the point down to about a third to leave the same distance on the other side, putting in a hard crease, then halving that, and then you've got one, two, three, then halve those and you've got six. Six look, looks pretty good, but I'm going to be lazy and choose a multiple of two because multiples of two are sort of easier. So I'm going to fold in half. So now I have it, that whole triangle folded in half. I will reverse that crease just so that it doesn't have a front or a back. 
Now that I've got it folded in half, I'll fold the point to the newly formed crease to get quarters in the top half. And fold that newly folded crease to the other crease. I like going in halves because you can be a little more accurate each time. Make sure that these little under flaps don't flip out, because that will make it less accurate. Fold to that fold. We're going to reverse those again, just so that they are, they're nice and non-directional. Turn that back the other way. Turn that one back the other way. So that's quarters, and if you, you could leave it at quarters, actually, and you'd end up with something clumpy like this. Notice the thickness of that is a quarter. It's the same thickness as that. Um, I don't think that's delicate enough, and I don't think you get enough of the body on the inside, so I choose to go, go further, and I'm going to halve again here. I'm going to go with another half of that. So this is where it starts to get fiddly. Um, a little bit of accuracy is a good thing and always folding only in half. I don't rely on the outside edges. I tend to fold to, an, to the nearest fold. You get a better half that way. Fold, 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 and the last one I'll take back this way for no particular reason. Um, flipping it over and over and over and over, it doesn't really matter so long as in the collapse, you get it the right way around. So these are just pre-creases, and you notice there's been a bit of drift on that fold, but I think we'll find that it's going to be fine. Alrighty, so I am just going to reverse all of those folds, just so that they don't have a front and a back for the moment. I'm just trying to spread them through the layers that we've currently got here, just so that when we come to collapse, it is easier. All right. So now you notice that we've got eight divisions here. All right. So this is an eight uh, an eight pleat. Here's where it starts to get fiddly. So you open it back up, body side up. And the idea here now is that we're going to do an accordion pleat. So the outermost crease is a mountain. So you'll have to reverse some sections of it because. Uh, the last time you folded it, it was the wrong way around. So there's the outer crease is a mountain. Then the next one in is a valley. So you can pinch at the corners to collapse down on the valley. And ease along the edge, pinch at the corner. Ease along the edge, pinch at the corner. And then the one inside that is a mountain. So I call it an accordion pleat because it looks a lot like the bellows of an accordion, in and out, in and out. So this is the fiddliest part of the model. Um, it pays to be tidy here. It also pays to have accurate creases. And I've got a bit of inaccuracy here, so it'll be interesting to see what that effect, knock-on effect is of the slight inaccuracy, because I haven't quite got exactly eighths. Um, I'm not sure how much fun it would be folding on a much smaller piece of paper. Uh, but if you're careful and you don't mind fiddling, you've got less fat, clumsy fingers than I do, you'd probably be fine. So you'll notice all I'm doing is I'm being systematic, pinching each corner as I go and orienting the folds in alternating mountain and valley. Take your time, you don't need to rush. It's a relatively quick model. It comes together fairly quickly. So this last pair of creases is an, a valley followed by a mountain. Um, and if it's too small, smush is fine too. Smush is a technical term which basically means uh, make good. So I've done a little bit of a smush in the middle there because that's going to be his mouth. Oh, it's actually the back of his head. So notice that I'm hinging it now on the original crease to bring that back onto the rest of the snail body. Now understand that most of the snail body from here on in is going to be inside the shell, and the shell is on the other side. So what we need to do is we need to have a small amount of body 
So what I do, it naturally wants to fold itself in half there, so I just make sure it does it symmetrically, and then I pinch gently to about halfway. Now I don't need, to, don't need a hard crease there, in fact there are advantages in not having a hard crease there at all, because in a moment I'm going to spread these little folds here that you can possibly see. You can see all of the bellows here. Um, I can spread those a little bit to get my neck, neck creases, and that's going to be my next task. Um, and you reach into each of the folds with your thumb, and you just release a little bit of the paper and then close that fold back up again. Move to the next one, release and move the fold a little bit off the previous fold, release and move the next a little bit off from the fold, and as you can see, what we've done here now is we've spread those and the net effect is I've added some new folds just a little off the centre underneath. And if you do it symmetrically, then it actually wants to be a bit round, which also makes the snail feel a bit more um, organic. It's not flat. It causes a bit of tension on these corners, and that tension is actually your friend, because if you sneak that fold further out to the point, then it naturally wants to round that corner and then you can help it by just tucking the round corner underneath. And then you've got a roundish leading edge of the foot of the snail. You do the same here by just cheating that fold out a little bit. Showing you from underneath. So cheating it out a little bit. And that naturally causes a pocket here which you can then fold. And then you get a nice round edge on the front here. So I quite like that effect. Um, you can play with it as much or as little as you like. So in terms of general model, we now have the neck folds, the two eye stalks, and this thing here that's going to be the shell. So what you do next is really up to you. Um, I find these are fiddly if you've already put the shell in, so I'm going to do the eye stalks first. And you'll notice that each of these has a little coloured eyeball on the end of the eye stalk. And that's actually pretty easy to achieve. Because all you need to do is you'll notice that there's a point here, and what you can do is that you can, with your finger, squash it a smidge, and then just turn back the corner to reveal the inside colour. When you close it again, now it's got a coloured top, which is cool. Again, you've got probably more nimble fingers than I have, but it's easy if you just squash, open up and squash the tip and bend some of the paper back from the inside, then when you close it back up, you've got a little coloured tip on the end of your antenna. Now shaping the antenna, um, there are lots of ways of doing this. I think the best way to do it is to actually create a little um, rabbit ear on the, in, uh, on the inside here. I'll show you how that works. Uh, by holding the snail this way, you can bend the paper that way, bend the paper that way. So now I've got a little V-shaped notch here. And then a channel up the eye stalk to halve the, the eye stalk so that it's half as thin. Make it nice and thin, but don't go all the way to the top because remember you've got a coloured top and you can play with that and make some eye expressions. But the nice thing about the rabbit ear is that when you squidge it a smidge, it sits properly on top of the snail's head. The other nice thing about the snail is that once you've got the eye stalk, you can then start to think about how you want to pose it. Now, if you've ever seen a snail, they rarely have both stalks looking the same. So you can actually um, model how you want the, the eye stalks to look. I'll do the same with the other, very quickly, and then we'll show you how to, to form the shell. There are a couple of different ways of forming the shell, and once you've got the basic knack, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just running a crease up the middle on the inside, completing the rabbit's ear just down here and not creasing the tip because I want the coloured eyeball visible as well. And I'll come back at some stage later and model those. And you'll notice that I'm starting to see some of the inside layers of the paper, but you can massage those so that you see very little of that. Right? You can hide that internal colour. All right. The next most important skill would be the shell. And I'd like to pretend to you that the shell is complicated, but it really isn't. 
Notice that we've got that gentle pinch line up to about the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that paper, I'm going to push my thumb on that gentle thumb on that gentle crease line, about in the middle of the sheet, and notice it's turning itself up. And if I close the, sh the snail now, what it tends to want to do is it tends to want to bring that forward. And that's actually the basis of a shell. You notice it takes very little to suggest a snail. And we've already got the beginnings of a snail here. So what I'm going to do, I'm not never going to crease this. I want that to stay volumetric. I want it to stay round. But I am going to crease down the bottom just so that it sits. And I'm going to eyeball an angle so that these things stick out at about where the mouth of the snail is. So when I've identified whereabouts the mouth is, then I crease these all the way up to that point. So that sort of fixes the geometry of the shell a little bit. So now we have to make it round, um, and there are lots of ways of doing that. The easiest way of making it round, I think, is to mountain fold a little bit down this corner and this corner to create a pinch. I'll show you. So I take the this is now working on the shell. I'm trying to not damage the rest of the snail. But I take this corner here and I angle bisect. That's 45 degrees, right to the corner. And I pinch some of the way into the sheet. Now notice I'm not going all the way in. Because we're going to create a little triangle at the back of the shell here. And that creates some paper tension, which keeps the shell round. So you don't need to crease all the way in, you just need to crease a little way in. I'll do that with the other corner as well. Creasing symmetrically here so that the shell is round um, helps. So getting the geometry correct and getting the distance is about right. Notice I've got a little bit of a triangle happening here of unfolded paper. If it gets a little pucker in it at this stage, just reach in, push the pucker out so that it's nice and round. Alright, to make this round, I then take this corner that I folded, and I fold it down. When I fold it down, I can reach inside it, and what I've now created is a little tuck that goes up to that point, not all the way to the middle, just up to that point, and that little tuck can now be locked. So if I, lock, if I want to lock it, I just fold it inside the shell, taking some of the paper with it. And that creates a really nice positive lock. If you then make that edge nice and crisp, that now has locked that shell. And you'll notice that that's quite a nice curve happening there. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And in fact, before I'd locked it, I probably should have compared the other side to make sure it's about the same. But a little bit of variety here doesn't matter. Notice I'm keeping that 45 degree line that I previously creased. And all I'm doing is I'm laying it down on itself, adding one new internal crease that's hidden by it. Next, I can tuck that in to lock it. And then if we get a little bit of a point up the top there, you can either leave it because it's sort of cool, or you can tuck that inside the shell as well, just to continue the rounding. So the idea here is to try and mimic the soft curves of the snail shell. So what we've now created is a bit of volume. You notice that it's not too bad. Um, I may have uh, got this point a little bit far back, so you can adjust the shell as it turns out. You can actually hold the snail and you can pull the shell back. And what it does is it actually moves that crease a little bit and gives you a slightly different geometry. You can then recrease that just pulls the shell back away from the body to make sure that you can see it. Now there's some finishing touches here. Um, a, a, a snail normally has a foot. It doesn't balance very well at the moment because it's very top heavy. So we need to splay the foot, but I'd also like some definition around the bottom of the shell here to make the shell obviously finish and the body continue. So one solution here, which is quite cool, is that you create an inside reverse Fold. So notice all I've done is I've just tucked a bit in. Right, so all I did was I pushed this corner in. 
So that's an inside reverse fold. And then I fold it back on itself to hide the shell colour over the, the foot of the, the, shell, the snail and crimp it in the corner here just so that we've got an edge of a shell with what looks like a foot emerging from it. And that's just a really simple little crimp, actually. A little triangular crimp. And I did that entirely by eye. Um, you can then shape this um, corner here so that it's nice and smooth, so that we've got a nice curve on it. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And it probably won't be identical, but that also doesn't really matter technique of isolating the shell from the body just gives you a little bit more definition of this, the, and the separation between the snail and the shell. Right. Fold it back on itself and create a little pockety thing because that's going to be a little triangular crimp. And almost finished now, the only thing left to do is to fold out the foot. And I would normally do a little valley fold across this triangle so this changes the centre of balance of the snail as well, so that it will actually stand correctly. Makes the head look like it's forward a smidge. So all I've done is I've bent that, and I want them symmetrical, so I will do the same bend on the other side, and I'll use one side as a reference for the other side. Now we've got feet that are sticking out. You should find that your little snail stands correctly. You'll notice that it's volumetric, you can adjust the shell, have your finger inside the shell to adjust it and make it go round. Um, he tends to spread because he is a, um, a fold in the middle a, a uniaxial base. So if you don't like him spreading so much, you can just pop a tiny drop of glue. And you only need a tiny little bit just up in this crevice here, hold it while it's, while it's drying. And then the foot doesn't spread, but even spreading the foot. It's quite a, quite a cute little snail. Um, you can model all of these little pieces so that you don't see all of the colour, or you can leave some of the colour because maybe he's smiling at you. It's difficult to know. Um, that's my snail. Um, you'll notice that one thing this snail doesn't have is a tail. Um, the foot of the snail, typically when he's out of the shell, appears out the back. But I decided that that wasn't necessary, that there was enough character in this model and in fact, if you play around with the antenna and the, 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 um, the angles, you can give the snail quite an, quite an attitude, uh, quite a fun little character. I hope you understood what I did, and I hope that you give it a whirl and fold one for yourself. Thanks for listening.